yep, it's finally happened. We're broken down. The outback certainly takes its toll on these vehicles. This is a classic survival situation. Do the wrong thing and you'll probably perish. Do the right thing and you'll probably survive. Step one, do not leave the vehicle. People often make that mistake and they perish within a couple of days. Remember, the vehicle is the safest place to be. Time to hit the road. The reality is a four wheel drive like this one is more than capable of negotiating a track test like this. The problem is city seekers like these people, they got no idea. They're more interested in getting a bit of dirt on the side of the vehicle. Incredible. Okay, start her up. Okay. Okay, don't touch the brakes, you'll lose control. Yep. Low range, first gear. Right. Watch and listen to me. Okay. Oh, yep, good. it only takes a little know how. Thanks to good seat belts and a visit from my mates in the Royal Flying Doctor Service, those two tourists were eventually discharged from you intensive know? care. You know, people are always coming up to me asking me for advice on driving in the outback. And if I could give you one tip, It'd be leave your trailer behind. I'd like a dollar for every time I've had to rescue someone stuck in the middle of nowhere because of one of these. My tip is to unhook it and leave it at home. Because remember, trailer spells trouble. Oh shit. No doubt about it. The best way to be truly safe in this country is to travel with yours truly. G'day, what seems to be the problem? I think it's the battery. Mm. You're not from around here, are you? I'm not, no. Where are you from? Near Manchester. I thought so. Listen, hop back in and we'll uh, see if we can get you started. Lucky for her, help was at hand. I never go out into the outback without a good set of these. Jumper leads. Her battery's as flat as a pommy beer, but I'll have her back on the road before she can say God save the Queen. A basic knowledge of bush mechanics is an absolute must here in the outback. Okay, turn her over, Dale. Shit. That was positive to negative. To positive to negative. With that lucky lass back on the road, it was time for me to get moving too. Whenever I'm in the outback, I always take the opportunity to fill up. Because too often people underestimate the distance between towns and get themselves in to trouble. and I fill it right up to the top and make sure I get out of here with a full tank. The Department of Conservation up this way don't like people using these alpine tracks and every so often they try blocking them off. We could have rolled this log to one side. What's happened As it was our last day together, I thought we'd have a little fun and teach those bureaucrats a lesson at the same time. As a formerly licensed explosives expert, I always carry a few sticks of gelignite in the back of the car, and it wouldn't take me long to wire up a charge or two. There's an old Aussie saying, what happens in the bush stays in the bush. Now it was just a question of placing the explosives in place and clearing the road once and for all. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, And as the sun set on another day in the high country, it was time for us to bask in the glow of some very special moments. Bog day, fellas? Yep. Yeah, let's see if we can't get you out. It never ceases to amaze me. People like this, city folk, come out into the outback without the right equipment. When I'm four wheel driving, I always carry one of these. It's called a, a snatch strap. Now that's tightly woven mesh, can hold up to 2,000 kilos or two ton in the old money. Let's see if we can't get these galanas out of here. Up here, recovery equipment is not just a necessity, it's a must. I hate to think what would have happened to these two amateurs if we hadn't come along. 